Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, Judith. And welcome to another Shabbat. We thank God that He has uh, brought us thus far. He brought us through a week where six days we labored, um, as He did, in creation. And on the sixth day is special because when Israel was in Egypt, well, when it was coming out from Egypt and they were in the desert, he uh, provided manna to sustain them. And he instructed them to gather manna um, as usual on five days. But on the sixth day, when they gathered manna, they were supposed to gather twice as much because they were not supposed to go out and work on the seventh day. And so the sixth day, in a sense, is a day of blessing because God provides uh, two meals for us. He provides uh, a meal for the sixth day and the seventh day, which is on God. Yes. So he's, he says, you don't have to go out and get that seventh day meal. I provide it double for you on the sixth day. And so what do we do on the seventh day? It's a holy convocation. So God wants to meet with us. That's pure and simple. It's an appointment with God. And who would want to miss an appointment with the creator of the universe? If maybe people thought of it in that sense, they'd be more excited about observing the Shabbat. But what we are doing is having an appointment with God. And also, we are doing a rehearsal for the millennial reign. So this is a very important day because God will give us instructions for the next week and give us what we need in order to sustain us for the next week. So the parsha for this week is entitled Pinchas, and we were introduced to Pinchas, which is translation of his name um, in uh, Hebrew is the Nubian. And so uh, it's taken from Numbers 25, verse 10 through uh, chapter 30, verse 1. And in my uh, Torah, it's divided into the scope. The first part is the gates of the promised land, and that's Numbers 25, um, 10 through 18. Then the next section is of census and women's inheritance. Numbers 25, 19 through 27, 23. Then the next uh, section uh, is entitled Offerings, Festivals, and Vows of Women. Numbers 28, 1 through 30. One. And it begins, Ve'yedavah Adonai el Moshe Lamor, Pinchas ben Eleazar ben Aharon ha-Kohen Hashiv et et ha-Matai ma'al b'nei Yisrael ve'kanu et ka-Nati betochem ve'lo ki-Lati et b'nei Yisrael bekin nati. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Pinchas, son of Eliezer, son of Aaron, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the Israelites by displaying among them his passion for me, so that I did not wipe out the Israelite people in my passions. Say, therefore, I grant him my pact of friendship. Psalm 119 P-E Is it P? Is it P? P-E 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 Thy covenant I'm sorry Thy testimonies are wonderful therefore doth my soul keep them the entry of thy word gives light it giveth understanding unto the simple I open my mouth and pant, pant it for I long for thy commandments. Look unto me, look unto me and be merciful unto me, and thou that usest to, to do those that love thee, as thou usest to do unto those that love thee. Order my steps in thy word, and let not my iniquities have 
dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of men, so will I keep thy precepts. Make thy, make thy face to shine upon thy servants, and teach me thy statutes. Rivers or, rivers or waters run down mine eyes, because, thy, because they keep not thy law. This is the word of the Lord. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, may your will be done. We give thanks to you, Lord God, for you have brought us to and into your Shabbat, the time you created during creation and called men to rest, called your nation Israel to rest on this day and to acknowledge the freedom that, that you have given them when you brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery and bondage, and made them free, and gave them this command on Mount Sinai, that they should rest on this day to recall the great powers of God, to give thanks for his goodness, and to give thanks for him keeping his promise. And we worship on that day, and celebrate and give thanks. And we celebrate with them, O Lord God, for through Christ Jesus, who came and died on the cross, who paid the sin debt, reconciling us back to you, that we can with glad hearts sing a new song, sing of freedom. And in this time we thank, we give thanks and worship and praise to the God who has not forgotten us, but who remembers us and, has get, and gives us rest and the ability to worship and to give thanks. And even more so, Lord, you have promised a house made, not made by hand will come and we will dwell in it forever and ever. And in our temporary dwelling here on earth, Lord, we invite you into it that we may draw closer to you and you draw closer to us. In the Son's name and the Spirit, we pray. Amen. <laughs> Barukata Adonai Elohedu Melo Halam Hamotsi Lekemin Sawak. Blessed art you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives us bread from the earth. Barukata Adonai Elohedu Melo Halam Bare Pri Hagapen. Blessed art you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives us the fruit of the vine. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom, 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 Shabbat shalom,
Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, Judith. And we look forward to Shabbat, especially in this time because it's, um, it's a healing place. It's a place you come for healing from the Shabbat because they will be ravaged from the six days and they'll need a seventh day. Uh, just as God had, um, not that he was ravaged, but again, he didn't need to work on the seventh day. He had done all there was. And so he stopped creating. And so that we start creating in order to sit down and have an appointment with our Creator and see what He has to say. Mm -hmm. And in this uh, Torah portion uh, for the week, uh, it's very interesting. And I think maybe you'll have a lot to say about it. Uh, but we'll see what we get, what we glean from it as we go along. And uh, I think probably, just to give you a hint, uh, 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 I will have you Numbers 10. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Pinchas, son of Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the Israelites by displaying among them his passion for me, so that I did not wipe out the Israelite people in my passion. Say, therefore, I grant him my pact of friendship. It shall be for him and his descendants after him a pact of priesthood for all time because he took impassioned action for his God, thus making expiation for the Israelites. The name who was killed, the one who was killed with the Midianite woman was Zimri, son of Salu, chieftain of the Simeonite ancestral house. The name of the Midianite woman who was killed was Kosbi, daughter of Zur. He was the tribal head of an ancestral house in Midian. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Assail the Midianites and defeat them, for they assailed you by the trickery they practice against you. Because of the affair of Peor, and because of the affair of their kinswoman, Kosbi, daughter of the Midianite chieftain, who was killed at the time of the plague on account of Peor. What say you, John? Um, I guess this is, um, uh, um, how does it start out? It starts out, well, last week's Porsche talked about Finhez and what he had done, how initially, and I really didn't get it <clears throat> at first, but what God wanted first to happen, he taught Moses and wanted Moses to gather all the heads of the people and deal with the matter. Well, they couldn't deal with it. Uh, and they just didn't know what to do. And most of the teachers that I've been listening to said the only person who knew what to do at that time was uh, Pinchas. Pinchas. Pinchas, I'm sorry, Pinchas. He was the only one who knew what to do. And, and he took matters in his hand. He wasn't, uh, he had nothing against Zimri, but um, as far as the uh, jealousy of the Lord, he... Um, he killed him, the short and long. And for standing up 
Oh, what, if, what, what was happening was not just whoredom, that was bad enough, but what really got uh, got uh, God angry was the idol. They, they caused the children of Israel, Israel to, to bow down to their idols, and that's a no-no. Uh, and that was the big part. I guess whoredom is kind of common, uh, and no one really gets all killed for that. But when you add idol worship, that's a biggie. That's that's a line that they crossing. Not like a golden calf. M Moses was able to deal with that, but this one he could not. But Penny has knew what to do, and he took vengeance on Pink not house. Pink House. I'm sorry, Pink House. And he could. He just these weren't just um, common people. These were princes and princes people. These were notable people. And um, I mentioned once, we talked about this once before, um, what is happening, um, this was some parting advice that Balaam gave Belak, how he could defeat the um, Israelites because he knew God hated Ivan, then uh, his country, the Midianites, could defeat Israel. So with that saying, this was a war. And this lady, the Cosby, she was military. She was a warrior. Um, for the other side. For the other side, right. And uh, her cohort, I guess she in, 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 induced, induced him to be a spy. And they came to the temple and I'm, they had to have done something um, to, de it doesn't say what they did, but it had to have been something. Sexual. Well, more, I think it was more than sexual. It was so bad that uh, uh, Pink House uh, it took a javelin and, and, and killed him. Well, usually with yeah. the, uh, usually with the, um, the, Pagans, the sexual thing was part of flipping their god. Okay. So well, when I say something sexual, it had it. It was definitely idol worshiping, but it was. Okay. Uh, well, I just said. Okay, but it also said um, that they did gain and bow down to their god, and it, men it mentioned both. But here, when they went to the temple, they didn't mention either one. And it also said they went into a tent. I don't know what tent they were talking about. The tent of the meeting. Well, that well, maybe I thought yeah, about I that thought that first. was it. I'm saying, hold could on. that have been it? Yeah, they, that's what I thought from the um, hold on from the um, from the um, <coughs> verse eight twenty five. So thank you. Translation um. Um, I thought, I, I don't know, okay, more historical problems. Go, you keep going on. I'm, no, I'm so but I said they went into the tent. I'm not sure which tent that was. I would like to say, I was thinking tent of the meeting, or was it his own tent? But I don't think so. It it had to have been there. Or maybe went inside. Um, uh, I, I don't know. And it's not clear. So she was a soldier, and one teacher said Cosby was her middle name, uh, not middle name, was her a nickname, and he said her name really was a slaughter them in my name, hmm. and when I said, wow, she was definitely a soldier, and what uh, uh, Finney has did, Pink House, Pink House, Pink House, okay. What he did, you a mind says many he has. I'm just telling you correct pronunciation in Hebrew. Okay, all right. King Has. All right, so uh, so she was a soldier, and what Pink House actually did, he was killing the enemy. Uh, God used the word zealous. Uh, he was zealous for God, and zealous or jealous. It's one of God's names. So, 
Um, what he did was good. And for doing that, he was granted a priesthood status. Now, he could not, could not have been a priest, although he was Eleazar's son and, and uh, Aaron's grandson, because he was born by the time the priesthood was being, um, being assigned. So the only, there was no way he could have been a priest. He was in a priestly family, but he was not a priest. This elevated him to becoming a priest. I don't think he was out to become a priest. I don't think he was angling for to become a priest. I think the situation presented itself, and he stepped up to the occasion. Um, now it said here. I think it said how many died. Twenty-four hundred. Maybe I went. Okay, you guys was reading. I thought it was twenty-four thousand. Twenty-four thousand. Twenty-four thousand. Thank you. Um, so there were, had to have been a lot of people dying. More uh, than more, more than, than at the Golden Calf. I thought you were, right. You talked about more than that. right. More than. And what he also did was was uh, well. It actually says here. He made an atonement for Israel. That's what he did by that act. So this was an atonement of what he had done. He knew the law. He knew what to do. Moses didn't. Mm -hmm. And even most, perhaps Moses, had Moses done it, it may not have been, would not have been the same. Mm -hmm. But what he did was not vigilantism. It was, uh, he was jealous for God. Defending God? No. Yeah. And, um, but God rewarded him for that. Um, this was. Um, this doesn't happen every day. You don't always get these Pinkos uh, moment every day. Uh, I, I think someone said his name was mentioned again in Joshua, um, but not in Torah. Uh, these couple of times, so you don't get these moments every day. But when the moment did, did come, he was he able to, to stand up for it. And one person calls it, he didn't, he didn't pass the buck. No. He took responsibility for it. Right. So I think that. Let me look at my little notebook here. I did call him. A new type of priest for a new land, and not based on lineage. Um, th they're at the at, right at the verge of going into the land. Yes. Um, and uh, what was what did I note I put? I said to induce it, to induce Israel into idolatry. Um, uh, uh, well, I guess they needed soldiers. They, they didn't have men soldiers. They used women soldiers. Uh, Israel was at war with the Midianites, and this was an act which was which uh, would have given them a military advantage. Uh, so Pinchas killed an enemy soldier and a traitor. I call him a spy. That is what I wrote yeah. last time as well. And, and we go back to when Ezra was getting ready to leave Egypt mm -hmm. at the Passover Seder. The word that they used is they were armed for battle. Mm -hmm. And when they left, they were called the army of God. Mm -hmm. So th their basic duty in this world is to be an army of God, to defend God's name against the ultimate enemy, and it is a war, composed of many battles, and Pinchas was fighting a battle, and he did, he defended God's name while they were, um, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. defending God's name mm -hmm. on the way to the land. Right. I did write one of the things that, uh, what he did, he killed a tribal leader in a tribal society. Uh, it's, it's not a small matter, many people, uh, may have objected. Perhaps many would have second-guessed him. Uh, this was a bold act by uh, Pinkhaus, 
how did he know he was doing the right thing? Well, perhaps he knew he knew the he had the um, the law on his side. Evidently, he was yeah. versed in the law. Yeah. yeah. So he was spiritual. His spiritual rewards came at a cost. Mm -hmm. uh, we all make choices. Yeah. We may not like uh, to make. Yes. But uh, must make them. Yes. Like a fractured piece. Yeah. Is better than no piece. And perhaps that's a, that is not perhaps that's a word for today. Mm -hmm. We all will have to make choices that right. are difficult. Mm -hmm. But we have to be pinchasas. Mm -hmm. We have to do it to defend God's name. And it will not get easier as we go along waiting for a Messiah to return mm -hmm. to make these choices. But we have to make it. We have to be resolute right. and make the choice as Pinchas did. Right. We do it for heaven and not for us. So. Yes, exactly. We do it for heaven. Yes, very good lesson for today. Right. Yes, it's not. Yes, so yes, this is very important. Right. Okay, the next part is a census and women's inheritance number 2519 to 2723. When the plague was over, the Lord said to Moses and to Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest, take a census of the whole Israelite community from the age of 20 years up by their ancestral houses, all Israelites able to bear arms. So Moses and Eleazar, the priest, on the steps of Moab at the Jordan near Jericho gave instructions about them, namely those from 20 years up, as the Lord had commanded Moses. The descendants of the Israelites who came out of the land of Egypt were Reuben, Israel's firstborn, descendants of Reuben, Enoch, the clan of Enochites, of Palu, the, son, the clan of Paluites, of Hezron, the clan of Hezronites, of Carmi, the clan of Carmites. Those are the clans of the Reubenites. The persons enrolled came to 43,730. Born to Palu, Eliab, the son of Eliab were Nemuel and Dayton and Abiram. These are the same Dayton and Abiram chosen in the assembly who agitated against Moses and Aaron as part of Korach's band when they agitated against the Lord, whereupon the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with Korak. When that band died, when the fire consumed the 250 men, and they became an example, the sons of Korak, however, did not die. Descendants of Simeon by their clans of Nemuel, the clan of the Nemuelites, of Yamin, the clan of the Yaminites, Yachin, the clan of the Yachinites, and Zerah, the clan of the Zerahites, of Saul, of Saul, Shaul, the clan of the Shaulites, those are the clans of the Simeonites, persons enrolled 22,200. Descendants of Gad by their clans, of Zephon, the clan of the Zephonites, of Haggai, the clan of the Haganites, of the Shunai, the clan of the Shunites, of Ozni, the clan of the Oznites, of Eri, the clan of the Erites, of Arad, the clan of the Aradites, of Arali, the clan of the Arielites. Those are the clans of Gad's descendants, persons enrolled 40,500. Born to Judah, Er and Onan. Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. Descendants of Judah by their clans of Shelah, the clans of Shelanites, of Perez, the clan of the Perizzites, of Zerach, the clan of the Zerahs, descendants of Perez, of Hezron, the clan of the Hezronites, of Amul, the clan of the Umalites. Those are the clans of Judah, persons enrolled 76,500. Descendants of Issachar by their clans of Tola, the clan of the Tolites, of Puva, the clan of the Punites, of Yashub, the clan of Yushabites, of Shimron, the clan of the Shimrites, Shimronites. Those are the clans of Issachar, persons enrolled 64,300. Descendants of Zebulon by their clans, of Zered, the clan of the Zeredites, of Elon, the clan of the Elonites, 
of Yalil, the clan of the Yalilites. Those are the clans of the uh, Zebulonites. Zebulon, Persons enrolled 60,500. The sons of Joseph were Manasseh and Ephraim by their clans. Descendants of Manasseh of Machir, the clans of the Machirites. Machir begot Gilead of Gilead, the clan of the Gileadites. These were the descendants of Gilead, of Ezer, the clan of the Ezerites, Helek, the clan of the Helekites, of Asri, the clan of the Asrielites, Shechem, the clan of the Shechemites, of Shemida, the clan of the Shemidites, Hefer, the clan of the Heferites, now Zelophahad, son of the Hefer, had no sons, only daughters. The names of Zelophehihad's daughters were Makla, Noach, Chogla, Milcha, Tirsak. Those are the clans of Manasseh. Persons enrolled 52,700. These are the descendants of Ephraim by the clans of the Shutalak, the clan of the Shutalites of Becher, the clan of the Becherites of Tahan, the clan of the Tahanites, these are the descendants of the Shutalah, of Aran, the clan of the Aranites, those are the clans of Ephraim's descendants per hundred. These are the descendants of Joseph by their clan, the descendants of Benjamin by their clans, of Bela, the clan of Belites, of Ashbel, the clan of Ashbelites, of Abiram, the clan of the Aranites, of Sheth. Fufam, the clan of the Shephufamites, of Hufam, the clan of the Hufamites. The clans of Bela were Ard and Naaman, of Ard, the clan of the Ardites, of Naaman, the clan of the Naamites. Those are the descendants of Benjamin by their clans. Persons enrolled, 45,600. These are the descendants of Dan by their clans, of Shuham, the clan of the Shuhamites. Those are the clans of Dan by their clan. All the clans of the Shuhamites persons enrolled 64,400. Descendants of Asher by their clans. Imna, the clan, clan of Imnites. Of Ishvi, the clans of the Ishvites. Of Beriah, the clan of the Berites. Of the descendants of Beriah. Of Heber, the clan of the Heberites. Of Malachiel, the clan of the Malachialites. The name of Asher's daughter was Sarah. These are the clans of Asher's descendants. Persons enrolled, 53,400. Descendants of Naphtali by their clans, of the Yaziel, the clan of the Yazielites, of Guni, the clan of the Gunites, of Yezer, the clan of the Yezerites, of Shilam, the clan of the Shemites. Those are the clans of the Naphtalites. Clan by clan, persons enrolled, 45,400. This is the enrollment of the Israelites, 601,730. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Among these shall the land be apportioned as shares according to the listed names. With larger groups, increase the share. With smaller groups, reduce the share. Each is to be assigned its share according to its enrollment. The land, moreover, is to be apportioned by lot, and the allotment shall be made according to the listings of their ancestral tribes. Each portion shall be assigned by lot, whether for larger or smaller groups. This is the enrollment of the Levites by their clans, of Gershon, the clan of the Gershonites, of Kohath, the clan of the Kohites, of Morari, the clan of the Mor Morarites. These are the clans of Levi the clans of the Lebanites, the clans of the Hebronites, the clan of the Machlites, the clans of the Mushites, the clan of the Korahites, Kor Kor Kohath begot Amran. The name of Amran's wife was Jochebed, daughter of Levi, who was born to Levi in Egypt. She bore to Amran Aaron and Moses and their sister Miriam. To Aaron were born Nadab Abih and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. 
Nadab and Abihu died when they offered alien fire before the Lord. Their enrollment of 23,000 comprised all males from a month up. They were not part of the regular enrollment of the Israelites, since no share was assigned to them among the Israelites. These are the persons enrolled by Moses and Eleazar the priest, who registered the Israelites on the steps of Moab at the Jordan near Jericho. Among these, there was not one of those enrolled by Moses and Aaron the priest when they recorded the Israelites in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, they shall die in the wilderness. Not one of them survived except Caleb, son of Yephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. The daughters of Zelophehad of Manasseh family, son of Heber, son of Gilead, son of Machir, son of Manasseh, son of Joseph came forward. The names of the daughters were Machla, Noah, Hagla, Milcha and Tilzak. They stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, the chieftains, and the whole assembly at the entrance of the tent of the meeting. And they said, Our father died in the wilderness. He was not one of the faction, Korach's faction, um, which, handed to, which banded together against the Lord, but died from his own sin. And he has left no sons. Let not our father's name be lost to his clan just because he had no son. Give us a holding among our father's kinsmen. Moses brought this case before the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, The plea of Zelophehad's daughter is just. You should give them an herit uh, a hereditary holding among their father's kinsmen. Transfer their father's share to them. Further speak to the Israelite people as follows. If a man dies without leaving a son, you shall transfer his property to his daughters. He, if he has no daughter, you shall assign his property to his brothers. If he has no brothers, you shall assign his property to his father's brothers. If his father had no brothers, you shall assign his property to the nearest relative in his own clan, and he shall inherit it. This shall be the law of procedure for the Israelites in accordance with the Lord's command to Moses. The Lord said to Moses, Ascend these heights of Abirim and view the land that I have given to the Israelite people. When you have seen it, you too shall be gathered to your kin, just as your brother Aaron was. For in the wilderness of Zen, when the community was contentious, you disobeyed my command to uphold my sanctity in their sight by means of the water. Those are the waters of Meribah, Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zen. Moses spoke to the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, source of the breath of all flesh, appoint someone over the community. Who shall go out before them and come in before them? Who shall take them out and bring them in, so that the Lord's community may not be like sheep that have no shepherd? And the Lord answered Moses, Single out Joshua, son of Nun, an inspired man, and lay your hand upon him, and have him stand before Eleazar the priest, and before the whole community, and commission him in their sight. Invest him with some of your authority, so that the whole Israelite community may obey. But he shall present himself to Eleazar the priest, who shall on his behalf seek the decision of the Urim before the Lord. But such instructions they shall go out, and by such instructions they shall come in, he and all the Israelites, the whole community. Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua and had him stand before Eleazar the priest and before the whole community. He laid his hand upon him and commissioned him as the Lord had spoken through Moses. What say you, John? Quite a bit. One thing I did uh, was interesting and I made a note. They did the census, and I didn't write down the number, the total number during the first census. Mm -hmm. But during the second census, there's less people. The population didn't grow. The population went down after 40 years. And what does that mean? Or what significance do I draw from that? Um, the first time that when the spies went into the land, uh, God said, go and possess the land. They had X number of people. Mm -hmm. Now they got 
minus less than X number of people. And I'm thinking as far as future generations, they can't say the spies may have had a point not to go into the land because with X number of people, they couldn't take it. They would need X plus one number, X plus X number of people to take the land. Uh -huh. But the God says, didn't want to give people that argument. So he gives them less than X to take the land. So they know they didn't do it themselves. Right, exactly. And they know the spies had, didn't have a point. The spies were wrong. Uh, I, I think it was, it wasn't, you know, just a few people different, but there was quite a few. Now, just to prove so, who was helping them go into that land? It was God. It wasn't them. It wasn't numbers. Yeah. It wasn't a numbers game. It was no, God. It wasn't numbers. Because they was up against a giant. Right. So even future generations said, you know what happened? Or even speculators, they can't even introduce that idea mm -hmm. that they needed more people to conquer the land. Mm -hmm. They didn't. And uh, the census helped confirm that. One other thing here, one of the daughters name for, um, oh, I forgot the guy's name, one of the five daughters that came to Moses and one of the Zophahat. Zophahat. Mm -hmm. I thought I might mispronounce it. One of the daughters' name was Noah. Mm -hmm. And it, apparently, well, we nowadays spell Noah for a girl's name different, but they spell it the same as, as Noah in, 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 uh, in Genesis. Mm -hmm. But it's a girl's name. Uh, they had um, no brothers, and they wanted to be mothers in Israel. They wanted to own land and have children in Israel. The whole idea was to own land, and they wanted to own land. They, they, came, they couldn't own land through their husband because it would not, it would be through their father's name. Right. It would be through their husband's father's name. So they presented something to Moses. And Moses went to God and said, that, that's right. Sounds right. Sounds, Sounds right, good. yeah. Now they had to marry um, uh, within their clan, uh, but they, they wouldn't lose their land. The guy, most people think it was the guy who was picking up sticks that, was, that died. Mm -hmm. It was his, his daughters. That's what most of the commentators think. And uh, they certainly want to distinguish him before... Um, um, oh gosh, who's the guy who? Uh, Korah. Made, Korah. They didn't want him as part of the car group. Right. But I guess he did something individually. He died of his own sin. Died in his own sin. Um, I guess didn't live long enough to have another to have another child. Uh, the other thing here, uh, Moses is going to die. God tells him you're going to die, which is kind of odd. Because when, I'm not saying God changes his mind, but certain, we can do things that changes the outcome. Now why do I say that? Mm. When say, and when he, um, God said, and, and thou hast, hast seen it, thou shalt be gathered into your people, like your brother Aaron. Aaron is died already. Mm. Means he's going to die. Mm. What did God tell I may have to read it again, but what did God tell uh, Moses at the burning bush? He was going to bring his people into the land. Mm -hmm. He's not going to bring his people into the land. Uh, because he's going to die. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, as I said, I'm not saying God changed his mind. I may, may need to read the burning bush story a little bit closer. But if God made a promise at the burning bush, um, it got changed somehow, and rebellion uh, will, will, was a big thing. The rebellion would do it. That's what seemed to be the big item here. Mm -hmm. And that's what it says, because you rebelled against my command. And you would think hitting a rock would be a very small thing. It's more than that. Yeah, he goes on in detail, uh, because he's... Um, the strife, and you did not sanctify God in the congregation. Because he hit the rocket, because he, okay. again, he was saying, 
Uh, Maybe with the spies that said they were saying God can't do it. Mm-hmm. No matter his act of hitting the rock, I suppose to speak. I don't know, yeah. but well, you know we we're yeah we s- s- tend to miss it. But I think when we talked about him hitting the rock a few parts ago, mm-hmm. we were saying he was still living in Miriam's world, and Miriam's world had passed, and mm-hmm. that's when he hit the rock. But Miriam's world is gone, so and a new world is coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, we're he passed the time right. to Joshua. And so he's not going in because the new world is going in, the new generation is going in, and Aaron is part of the, uh, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam were part of the old generation, a part of the old world. And maybe too, I think part of the thing is that Maybe had Moses gone in, they'd, he'd be like a golden calf. Pretty much, they would have worshipped pretty, Moses. Pretty much, it would have been as their God who brought them out of Egypt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, as opposed to worshiping God, and I think that the the the, the hole that we fall into, mm-hmm. we all fall into, is that once we have um, uh, plenty, we mm-hmm. don't give honor and glory to who provided the plenty. And that's God. Mm-hmm. Right. We may give it to ourselves because we're so right. smart. Yeah. Um, even our own we're, country that we're, we're such a great country. Yeah, right. No, it's God who gives and, and at, um, uh, at, at whose mercy we should bow down because he provides everything. It is his. He owns everything. And that's hard for us to, to grasp a hold of. We, just, we don't want to give that to God, that ownership to him. And we get in trouble because then we started worshiping idols, like we uh, uh, and ourselves that the things that we created provide mm-hmm. for us. No, mm-hmm. no, no. And God proved with Israel mm-hmm. that He sustained them on manna, something they had never heard of before mm-hmm. for forty years. Right. And that's why today, no matter what's happening, God can sustain us. Because we look mm-hmm. to him, not to any institution, any man, any uh, whatever. To our own, not to our own strength. We look to God to uh, provide for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I bet you mm-hmm. glad I read this part, then. Yes, I am. With all those names. I didn't realize this is all over you. Yeah, not crazy names. I'm just hard to pronounce names. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll do... Um, let's see. I'm going to let you do, oh, I tell you what, why don't you do Numbers 28, 1 through, do all of 28, all right. and then I'll um, do 29 and finish with that one go first. Okay. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, My offerings and my bread for my sac- sacrifices made by fire for a sweet savor unto, unto me shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Lord, two lambs of the first year, <coughs> without spot, spot, day by day, for a continuous, continual burnt offering. And one lamb shall thou offer in the morning, and one lamb shall thou offer at even, and the tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering, mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil. It is a continual, continual burnt offering, which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of a hen of of the one, of the one lamb in the holy place shall thy cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Lord for a drink offering, and the other lamb shall thou offer at even as the meat offering of the morning and as the drink offering there unto the Lord, and on the Sabbath day two la- two lambs of the first year without spot and two tenth deal of flour for a meat offering mingle with oil, and a drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath, besides the continuous burnt offering. 
and his drink offering. And in the beginning of your month ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks and one ram, five lambs of the first year without spot, and the three tenths deal of flour for a meat offering mingled with gold, and one bullock and two tenths deal of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil for one ram, and and a and a several tenth deal of flour mingled with oil for a meat offering unto one lamb for a burnt offering of a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And their drink offering shall be half a hen of wine unto a bullock, and a third part of a hen unto a ram, and a fourth part of a hen unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering for every month throughout the month of the year. And one kid of the goat for a sin offering to the Lord shall be offered beside the continuously burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the fourteenth day of the fifth of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. And in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten, and the first day shall be an holy convocation. You shall do no Ma- you shall do no manner of several work therein. But ye shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks and one ram and seven lambs for the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish. And that meat offering shall be a, be a flour mingled with oil. Three tenth deals shall you offer for a bullock and two tenth deal for a ram. A several and a several tenth deal shall thou offer for every lamb throughout the seven lambs. Mm-hmm. And one of the and one goat for a offering to make an atonement for you. You shall offer these besides the burnt offering in the morning, which is for a continual burnt offering. After this manner you shall offered daily throughout the seven days the meat of the sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. It shall be offered beside the, the continu- continual burnt offering and his drink offering. On the seventh day ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no several work. Also in the day of the first fruit, when you bring a n- new meat offering unto the Lord, ap- after your after your week be out, you shall have a ho- and holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. But you shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savor unto the Lord. T- two young bulls, one ram, seven lambs on, of the first year, and their meat offerings of four of flour mingled with oil. Three tenth deal unto one bullock two tenth deal unto one ram, a several tenth deal unto lamb, unto one lamb, throughout the seven lamb, and one kid of the goat to make an atonement for you. You shall offer them beside the continual burnt offering and his meat offering. They shall be unto you without blemish and that drink offering. Uh, these are the, this is the sacrificial system that's being repeated. Of what wait, sh- wait, wait! You finished? Yeah, I'm finished. Okay, okay, finish reading. Then. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, you start. You want to talk? Okay, I'm sorry. I just lost track of you. And the uh, uh, this is um, 29 verse one. In the seventh month of the first day of the month, you shall observe a sacred sacred occasion, and you shall not work at your occupations. You shall observe it as a day when the horn is sounded. You shall present a burnt offering of pleasing odor to the Lord, one bull of the herd, one ram, seven yearling lambs without blemish, the meal offering with them, choice flour with oil mixed in, shall be three-tenths of a measure for a bull, two-tenths for a ram, and one-tenth for each of the seven lambs. And there shall be one goat for a sin offering to make expiation on your behalf. In addition to the burnt offering of the new moon with its meal offering, 
and the regular burnt offering without its meal offering, each with its libation as prescribed, offering by fire pleasing odor to the Lord. On the tenth day of the seventh month, you shall observe a sacred occasion when you shall practice self-denial. You shall do no work. You shall present to the Lord a uh, burnt offering of pleasing odor, one bull of the herd, one ram, seven yearling lambs, see that they are without blemish. The meal offering with them, of choice flour with oil mixed in, shall be three-tenths of a measure for a bull, two-tenths for one ram, one-tenth for each of the lamb, seven lambs, and there shall be one goat for a sin offering, in addition to the sin offering of expiation, from the regular burnt offering with its meal offering, each with its libation. On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, you shall observe a sacred occasion. You shall not work at your occupations. Seven days you shall observe a festival of the Lord. You shall present a burnt offering, an offering by fire, a pleasing odor to the Lord. Thirteen bulls of the herd, two rams, fourteen yearling lambs, they shall be without blemish. The meal offering with them of choice flour with oil mixed in shall be three-tenths of a measure for each of the thirteen bulls, two-tenths for each of the two rams, and one-tenth for each of the fourteen lambs. And there shall be one goat for a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering, its meal offering and libation. Second day, twelve bulls of the herd, two rams, fourteen yearling lambs without blemish, the meal offering and the libations for the bulls, rams and lambs in the quantities prescribed, and one goat for a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering, its meal offering and libations. The third day, eleven bulls, two rams, fourteen yearling lambs without blemish, the meal offering and the libations for the bulls, rams and lambs in the quantities prescribed, and one goat for a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering and its meal offering and libation. The fourth, fourth day, two, um, ten bulls, two rams, fourteen yearling lambs without blemish, the meal offering and the libations of the bull, rams and lambs and the quantities prescribed, and one goat for a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering, its meal offering and libation. The fifth day, nine bulls, two rams, Fourteen yearling lambs without blemish, the meal offering and the libations for the bulls, rams, and lambs, and the quantity prescribed, and one goat for a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering, its meal offering and libation. The sixth day, eight bulls, two rams, fourteen yearling lambs without blemish, the meal offerings and libation for the bulls, rams, and lambs, and the quantities prescribed, and one goat for a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering, its meal offering and libations. The seventh day, seven bulls, two rams, fourteen yearling lambs without blemish, the meal offering and libations for the bulls, rams and lambs and the quantities prescribed, and one goat for a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering, its meal offering and libation. On the eighth day, you shall hold a solemn gathering. You shall not work at your occupations. You shall present a burnt offering, an offering by fire, odor to the, uh, odor, a pleasing odor to the Lord. One bull, one ram, seven yearly lambs without blemish. The meal offerings and libations for the bull, the ram and the lambs in the quantities described, and one goat for a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering, its meal offering and libation. All these you shall offer to the Lord at the stated times, in addition to your votive and free will offerings, be they burnt offerings, meal offerings, libations, or offerings of well-being. So Moses spoke to the Israelites just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Yep. All these offerings and All right. They did mention that these offerings this was the same information that Moses got when he was on Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Um and I still wonder how this is it a family? This is a lot of animals, and you would think that their altar wasn't that big. How can altar was uh, big? It had to be huge. You it know. was. If you've seen the um the pit, uh, picture, I mean, it was huge. Yes, it was. But if you have fourteen bulls, they were continu It was continuously. 
they had a system down yeah. of how they did it. Now, how did, I know they had a lot of families, but. The uh, Levites still. Well, the Levites did. Oh, you mean, did, but you mean all had, the people who yeah, brought the, people the stuff? Had to, had to bring it to the Well, Levites. they had a system of how they did it, of how they slaughtered them and they burnt mm -hmm. them. And, but I'm just saying, how did they get them there? And I'm sure that, um, I don't know. I'm sure it was know. a sight to behold. Yeah. But if they did 14 bulls on one day, mm -hmm. it, that's just... That's a lot of work. Isn't it? Well, that's still, how, how would they get to 14? You had, you know, you know, without, you know what you're doing? thousand people. You know what you're doing now? Trying to figure out the nuts and bolts. And God's, God is God. God made sure that it happened. Okay. You're, trying, you're, you're doing what the spies did. I'm not, I'm not accusing no, I'm just saying, you. But how can yeah, that happen? Yeah, I'm, I'm a guy, the head of one household. Yeah. And I said, Chief, do I need to get 14 bulls? No, honey, you don't get 14. No. Yeah. No. No, I don't think it's easy. No. Those no. are. I don't know. Well, we should. Okay. I guess of all the bulls that were given, maybe they just take 14 out of all that were given. You mm -hmm. give. You know, five bowls. No, each family gets five bowls. No. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Well, most of the teachers, this is kind of straightforward, and they don't really get down into the nuts and bolts of it. But this is a sacrificial system. We are basically giving back to God, uh, who has given this to us, and He wants it perfect, and which means, you know, we have to. Be conscious of what we're giving to God, or what we're doing for God. Yes. This is part of our service, part of our thanks. And He outlines God. everything. Yeah, and it acknowledges that He has he, everything that we give Him. He mm -hmm. has given to us that we don't own anything. No. So this is part of the service to God. If we, if we, if we got a hope to that, then we will be ahead of the game. But we don't own nothing. Yeah. It is God. God who provides, God who makes a way. Um, so, and God owns, and it's God's ownership of the earth. God owns everything. Mm -hmm. And we don't own anything. He allows us to be, uh, what, a tenant farmers, right. I'll say that. Right. A tenant, whatever, you, you, uh, you're, you're loaned this while you live on this earth. You're loaned this, but you don't own, because you're not going to take not one, never cent. I'm getting, uh, one cent um, to the other side with you. It won't go. You don't need this kind of stuff on the other side where you're going. So this is just for now, all this stuff that's going on. And so we need not be enamored of it because it has no value. But we should collect things that have value that we can transport mm -hmm. over to the other side. That is our goal to do things that we can transport to the other side. And it ain't mm -hmm. nothing physical. It ain't silver or gold or diamonds that we can take with us. Mm -hmm. But we can take what God gives us, the knowledge of Him. We can take uh, the um, um, the knowledge that we have led uh, or told other people about the God of the universe. We can take that with us because if we do that, then those people will be with us in eternity or during the millennial reign. So those are the things that we can take over uh, the great divide. Mm -hmm. And that's what we should be concentrating on now uh, because everything is going to fail. Everything will fail. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, uh, because we have said to God, and I think God is going to say, you know, hey, you think you could do it by yourself? You do it. But we have said to God, we don't need you. And a consequence of that is God uh, turning you over to a reprobate mind or saying, okay, you don't need me? Well, I'm going to take my hands off of this. And that's what we have mm -hmm. said as a nation, as a world, as a city, that uh, we don't need you, God. We don't want you in our affairs. We have figured out a way to do mm -hmm. everything. We have figured out a way, except we have not figured out a way to um, give life and to take life, and to, well, not we take life. To um, yeah. yeah, we can take it, but we ha we can't figure out a way to uh, to give life, to make life. 
or to make something well, from nothing. Oh, okay. To make something from nothing. We haven't figured that out. Mm -hmm. We're still using God's sand to mm -hmm. try and create things. That's not creation. That's stealing. Right. And not giving uh, honor and glory to whom it is. This is God. Every speck of dirt in this earth, every star, the moon, the planets, all is his. And he loans it to us. And if we give, acknowledge his uh, loan, then we'll be uh, able to do what he wants us to do here on this earth. Okay? Mm -hmm. We did good. Yeah, yeah. thank God. Good discussion. Uh, and we look forward to what God is going to do for us this Shabbat. Because uh, we have a meeting with him. And we, what we did was, we set aside the time, we um, uh, cooked enough food, we got enough food, um, um, John worked, he didn't have to work tomorrow, um, because mm -hmm. God said, don't do it. No. No. Don't, you don't have to go out. I have provided food for you and sustenance for you. You don't have to go out. You can have a meeting with me, the king of the universe, who would want... Who wouldn't want to meet with an earthly king? Although they can't do anything for you. Who mm -hmm. wouldn't want to say that I met the Queen of mm -hmm. England or I met the President of the United States or I met the Governor or even the Mayor? Who wouldn't want to say that? Even though they can't do anything other than their title display. But here is the King of the Universe who says, I will meet with you on the seventh day. Set aside time for me. Don't go out to earn a living. Mm -hmm. Don't go out to buy food. Have it prepared on the sixth day and sit with me and see what I will tell you. And so we mm -hmm. are sitting with him to see what he will tell us and show us that we can take into the next week so that we will build up, be built up and that we can accomplish much for the kingdom of God because he, he our Messiah is getting closer. He's getting closer. The millennial reign is getting closer. Where we will rule and reign with him for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. And so we're excited about it. All right. So the Parsha for the next week is two. We have two Parsha. So we'll catch up uh, to Israel. Mm -hmm. And the Parsha are Matot and Masai. Masai. I don't pronounce that right. Matot and let me pronounce that right. Yeah. Gosh, so we oh wow. This is gonna be we're gonna have a good time next yeah. week. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just look at the Hebrew so I can pronounce it right. Um Matot and is Numbers 30, um, verse 2, through chapter 32, verse 42. And it starts out, Matot, they... Ve'yedavea Moshe el roshi ha-matot le'bni Yisrael l'amor ze ha-daver asher tzav'a Adonai. Um... Moses spoke to the heads of the Israelites' tribe, saying, This is what the Lord has commanded. And Masai, Masai is from Numbers 33, uh, 33, 1 through 36, 13. Ele Masai, Bene Israel, Asher, Yetzul, Me'eretz, Mitzraim, Litz, Litzim, Otam. Be'yad Moshe Be'aharon. Uh, these are these were the marches of the Israelites who started out from the land of Egypt, troop by troop, in the charge of Moses 
and Aaron. So we have two partial to uh, next week. So we'll be mm -hmm. reading a lot mm -hmm. uh, next week and see what they, um, a lot of names and stuff. So I'll try not to give those passages to you. <laughs> next week I'll mark them off. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is going to be great. So we'll catch up. The Israel will be on the same page the Israel as we as we go toward the High Holy Days, because the High Holy Days, um, Rosh Hashanah, mm -hmm. is the 20, starts sundown the 25th of September. And so that begins the High Holy Days. So we're, we're almost there. We're gonna have a um, interesting time here as we lead up to the High Holy Days. We should, we should be excited. A lot of the, the teachers are excited about this time because I listened to one rabbi and he was really saying, you know, some interesting things about the coming of, of Messiah as the Jewish people um, are looking for a Messiah to come. And um, they, um, um, they've been looking for him. It's not, and it's, it's, it's not that they don't believe in Messiah, no. They don't, they don't believe he's come yet. Because there will be two messiahs also are coming, uh, a messiah ben Joseph, who's going to come as a suffering servant. And then there's messiah ben David, who comes as a, a, a king. So um, this is very interesting. And that e even um, believers, believers in messiah Yeshua, Jesus, are excited about the high holy days. Because that they believe that something... Um, just wonderful, and usually during the High Holy Day, there's something wonderful that happens, and uh, so I look forward to it. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, and we all should, but in each Shabbat, we should look forward to each Shabbat because again, something happens. God, God reveals more of Himself. He reveals who He is, and we have, and and He sets the place and the time. He says, you know, be at your homes, be at your tables, talking about me. And I will reveal myself to you is basically what I'm saying that he said. But you have to be where he says you need to be so that he can reveal himself. And uh, we are here and we are waiting. We said, come, come, mm -hmm. come, Lord. Come, reveal yourself. We're here and join this repast that you've given us. So we're excited. And so, and so, John. Well, my friend, I didn't print. Oh, okay. I know we've been having trouble with to get into that. Okay, well, uh, let's just do something. Um, uh, let's do something. Oh, let's do this. I love this song because I love the story of a guy, and I forgot his name, who wrote it. And uh, it's Amazing Grace. And I listened to it. Uh, there was a, on YouTube. They there was a singer in Germany. He sang it, and there were like two hundred bagpipes that accompany him. Mm -hmm. And this is such a solemn song because the guy who uh, wrote it was a slave trader, and he uh, was converted to Messiah um, when a woman, I think, if I remember correctly, she was. She was, they were throwing her overboard or whatever, I don't know. She and her child, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, I just, and, and she handed her child, you mm -hmm. know, she was trying to hand her child to him. And then he realized, he realizes, like everything open, that what he was doing was wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and he wrote this song that we sing, we sing uh, now uh, because of his, Conversion. He wrote this song that we sing, mm -hmm. and so we sing "Amazing Grace." Mm -hmm. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Yeah. 
Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Sing the song of Shabbat.